Hey guys, it's Leia. Today we'll talk about how to find the limit using the squeeze theorem. So what is the squeeze theorem? The textbook definition is shown. However, it may look a little confusing. Let's see what the theorem is actually saying. Here is our function f of x. We want to find its limit as x approaches a. So we pick a function that is an upper bound to it. We'll call this function h of x. We'll also pick a function that is lower bound to it. We'll call this function g of x. The squeeze theorem says if the limits of h of x and g of x are the same as x approaches a, then the limit of f of x as x approaches a must equal this limit. It's because it is squeezed or sandwiched between these two functions. The squeeze theorem is used when substitution gives you an indeterminate or when algebraic methods are not effective. We often see the theorem used with limit problems involving trig. Let's see an example. We have the limit of x squared times sine of 1 over x as x approaches 0. We first must find the upper bounded function h of x and the lower bounded function g of x. We know sine of 1 over x is between negative 1 and 1 because the graph of sine of x is always oscillating between negative 1 and 1. Now we'll multiply negative 1 is less than or equal to sine of 1 over x is less than or equal to 1 by x squared to get f of x in the middle. By doing this, we also get our g of x and h of x. Now we find the limit of g of x and h of x as x approaches 0. We'll find the limit of g of x first. We have the limit of negative x squared as x approaches 0. We substitute 0 in for x and get 0 as the limit. Now we find the limit of h of x. We have the limit of x squared as x approaches 0. We substitute 0 in for x and get 0 as the limit. We can see the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 equals the limit of h of x as x approaches 0. That means the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 also equals this limit. So 0 is the answer. Let's see a graph to better understand. We see f of x on the graph. Now we'll add g of x and h of x on the graph. We can see all three functions approach 0 as x approaches 0. One more example. We have the limit of 2x plus x times sine of x as x approaches infinity. First, we have to find h of x and g of x. We know sine of x is between negative 1 and 1, so we'll use this knowledge. This time we'll substitute in negative 1 and 1 for sine of x. So we have 2x plus x times negative 1 is less than or equal to 2x plus x times sine of x is less than or equal to 2x plus x times 1. We can simplify g of x to x, and we can simplify h of x to 3 of x. Now we'll take the limit of g of x and h of x. First we'll find the limit of g of x. We have the limit of x as x approaches infinity. We substitute infinity in for x and get infinity as the limit. Now we'll find the limit of h of x. We have the limit of 3 of x as x approaches infinity. We'll substitute infinity in for x and get infinity as the limit. Because the limit of g of x as x approaches infinity is equal to the limit of h of x as x approaches infinity, then the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity also equals this limit. So infinity is the answer. Let's see a graph to better understand. We see f of x. Now let's add its upper and lower bounds h of x and g of x. Okay, for more practice on the squeeze theorem, visit www.symbolab.com and click on the practice tab.